Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today is a cold and rainy day, the first real cold day of the fall that we've had. I think our temperatures are hovering somewhere in the 40s right now. And we're getting ready to have a rain system move through. But I want to see if I can get these viburnums into the ground that I got at my plant hall not too long ago. Um, it would be great to get them in the ground because then I won't have to care for them in the cold weather and they'll be able to settle in for the fall. So come with me and let's see if we can get these plants in the ground before the rain really gets us back inside. Oh, it's chilly out here. This is really the first cold night that we've had um, overnight and it didn't get down into the 30s yet even still I think but anyway so today's project is to plant three um, all that glitters arrowwood viburnums here and one blue muffin arrowwood viburnum these are shrubs that I picked up at Lowe's on 50% off clearance a few days ago last week sometime and um, they're gonna become part of my shrub border that we're doing along the north side edge of our front yard um, you may remember that I planted three skip laurels right there by the black cherry tree and um, on the other side over there is where I'm going to do more specimen planting and we're doing a no dig bed preparation over the winter from the skip laurels that way and from the skip laurels this way and this is I'm going to be considering it a separate kind of garden and so I'm going to just start with this grouping of four viburnums here now these viburnums they bloom with uh, sprays of white flowers in the spring and then if they're pollinated then in the fall you'll get sprays of blue berries which should be beautiful but all that glitters grow to be four to six feet tall and wide and the blue muffin grows to be five to seven feet tall and wide so I think I'm going to put the blue muffin kind of in the back and then the three um, all that glitters a little bit more toward the sidewalk uh, the All That Glitters has a little bit more glossy foliage. The Blue Muffin is a little bit more matte foliage, but otherwise they're very similar to each other. I'm hoping that they will pollinate each other, um, but there's a chance they won't, and that is if they don't bloom at the same time. So I'm not exactly sure that we're gonna get blueberries on any of these, uh, but for arrowwood viburnums, you need to have a pollinator plant that's a different cultivar from the uh, others, each other. Um, now it's just a matter of placing them and getting them into the ground. I'm gonna be using my normal method of digging. Because I'm near so many trees here, I might have to adjust my spacing on these to accommodate the tree roots that are nearby. Um, but otherwise, I'm just gonna dig my holes, same depth as the plant, twice as wide as the plant, uh, well, as the, <laughs> the plant's root ball. And then I'm going to use Biotone Starter Fertilizer, which has microorganisms in it that help root development and help the plant establish. And uh, set them in and backfill. And um, yeah, that's it. So let me get the placement underway here. To try this placement my thought is the blue muffin in the back because it gets to be five to seven feet tall and then three all that glitters kind of in a curve around now I already see that I have a tree root right here so I really wanted this one to be like right there but there's a tree root there so I'm gonna have to adjust probably pull it back behind this tree root and hope that I'll be able to tuck it in right near there and that might make me adjust these as well I kind of wanted them in a curve but you take what you can get and there's a tree root right here so this one's probably going to have to be there um, i've got them in a zigzag so if you're considering that the blue muffin is the center then they're kind of in a curve the, all the glitters is in a curve around them but if you're looking at it from a different perspective they kind of go zigzag across this way um, i had to make sure that these don't go over into our neighbor's property boundary and uh, yeah i think that's what i'm going to go with so <laughs> let me dig all four holes before I place any of them.
So miracle of miracles, all four holes, no problem to dig. I was able to get them in between the big tree roots from the black cherry and this uh, hemlock over here and this whatever it is right there. I don't know what that one is. Um, their roots weren't in the way either. So I was able to get all four in the spaces where I wanted them. So now it's a matter of biotone and then putting them in and backfilling. Well, I got all four of them in the ground. I'm under no illusion that this ivy and this vinca aren't gonna come back. I pulled just the stuff that got in my way when I was planting my holes. Um, there's still lots of ivy and lots of vinca underneath here. And you know, because our neighbors have it planted over there and it comes this way. And both of those species are invasive species and they're all over our neighborhood and they pop up everywhere. So it's going to be a continuous battle against the ivy and against the vinca here. And we'll just have to deal with that as it goes. Um, I'm not gonna pull any more up right now. Maybe someday when I'm feeling like I want to do some gardening over the winter, I'll come out and pull some of it up. I don't know, who knows? They are. I did my normal trick of leaving the root ball about an inch or so above the level of the soil and then making a little collar around it so that um, water will pool there and soak down into the roots rather than running off down the hill. Did that for all four of them. So this one back here is actually going to be the tallest one in the end. It'll be five to seven feet tall and wide. The rest of these will be uh, four to six feet tall and wide. And now that I see them, did I plant them too close together? Hmm, if this gets to be five feet wide, it'll come over here about two and a half feet to right there. And that's way too close. Hmm. Hmm. Did I plant them too close together? I might have. Shoot. Okay. Nothing like making more work for yourself. I've planted these too close together. I wanted to have their trunks or their root balls about four feet apart, but the two that are nearest the tree are way closer to the two that are away from the tree, uh, way closer than four feet. 
I think I have to move two of them. this way as I can come because there's a tree root here. So I'm going to resituate this closer that way. Now I am going to add more biotone. This is a natural and organic fertilizer and it will not burn your plants. You can put this right near the root zone. In fact, that's what it's for. And I mean, it would take a lot before it would harm your plants. So I don't have any qualms at all about putting more biotone in this hole in the new hole that I just dug. I mean, that's only a few inches different, but I can't go any further that way because of the tree root. And I can't take these any further that way because of the properly line. So maybe I've made a poor choice for citing these viburnum. I'm just gonna cross my fingers and actually what I would love it is if they grow into kind of a, a nice hedge here. So it's okay if they're on their minimum spacing. That's my theory. All right, let me move the back one. Too. Fate is on my side today because I did not hit a tree root, so I was able to get a hole that lines up with this one. Thank goodness. I think that's as far that way as I'll be able to take these. And this is just gonna have to be where they go. And we'll just hope that I can, between pruning and between, you know, them growing together as one big mass, that it will end up looking okay. I got them replanted. Let's take a closer look. Okay, the spacing on these is a little bit better. From here to here, that is definitely four feet. Each of the zigzags is definitely four feet apart. And these two are four feet apart. And these two are four feet apart. So I'm hoping that this will work. So another questionable factor about the placement of these viburnums is the sun situation. They want full sun for the best flowering. They're not in full sun by any means. Or part shade, they can handle as well. These are definitely in part shade. The sun tracks on the uh, south side of our house. It comes up behind the house and goes across toward the street. And actually in the summer, it goes, of course, higher in the sky. And so these should get, I want to say, part dappled sun most of the day. And then in the afternoon, maybe some full sun. So these may not be the best position for these viburnums of either. Course, one other consideration for these shrubs is the root competition from the trees. This is a black walnut tree. It's probably something near 100 years old. This is a sycamore, not a sycamore, a hemlock tree that our neighbor has in their yard. And I'm not sure what this kind of tree is, um, but the roots of these trees are thick and substantial. Um, if a tree's roots are the same size as its canopy, then holy moly. <laughs> but some trees have deep root systems, some have shallow. So this black cherry has been growing here. There was a privet hedge there. It was doing okay. So I'm going on the assumption that these viburnums won't have too much root competition. They'll be able to stand up to that. Those of you who've been following me along on this project, you may remember that I do have to worry about being deer resistant for any of the plants or shrubs that I put out here in the front garden. We have a very large population of deer who roam our neighborhood in all seasons, and they are known to snack on our tasty plants. These viburnum are medium deer resistance, according to proven winners, and they actually say on their tags that, uh, especially in the spring when the new green growth is coming out and when the blossom buds are out, you need to protect them from deer. So either by 
wrapping them in netting, which is a possibility, or uh, spraying a deer repellent. So I am gonna keep my eye out on these viburnums, especially in the spring, um, but I think they're gonna be okay. We're gonna find out. I'm getting rained on. I think I'm gonna have to go inside now. Um, so I'm gonna let the rain water these in. And if we don't get a good downpour, we are supposed to get a good downpour, but if we don't, I'll come back out and water them in more deeply after the rain is gone. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, let's just say, this is a good lesson. Um, if you make a mistake, mistakes in the garden are pretty easy to fix, especially if all it is is a placement of a plant or something like that. You can always move plants when they're young, for sure. When you're doing them, like just planting them right now, this is the best time, of course, to move them. But even if I had left those where they were and then came out tomorrow to fix them, that would have worked. I could have even fixed them next spring because they're young. They will be developing roots over the winter, but they'll still be young roots. And so um, it's, it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. Don't be hard on yourself. Just fix them and then move on. And uh, yeah, that's a good lesson to have in the garden. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, you might consider subscribing. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you in another video real soon, friends. Have a great day in your garden. Bye-bye.